<laughs> hey everybody, if you're just joining in, uh, well, we're just getting started. We're gonna hang out here a couple minutes before we get going. Get a couple more people trickling in for those of you that wanna watch us live. But this is gonna stream to Facebook and to YouTube. So if you can't catch us for this entire time, you can come back and watch us on Facebook and, and uh, YouTube. I'm going to go out right last. now. What's that? It's going to last like 30 seconds. 30 seconds. We're done. See you guys. Yeah. Peace. Um, I'm going to go out and share this link real quick. Give me just a minute and then I will be back. It's just never as fast as you want it to be. Well, everybody's home just chewing up internet speed right no i think it is it can you see it streaming live on your page already jason um i'm on my news feed i don't see it all right well let me show it to you and then we'll get going I see the modern eaters on. Yeah. I think John McGallard. He just texted me. What's up? All right. I just shared it to your page. All righty, everybody. We will get going. Uh, since we have some people here, I'll share it some more once you get going talking, Jason. But uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Jason Marsteiner. I am the owner of Colorado Mountain Man Survival, the Survival University. Um, I teach survival classes of all kinds, and what I, you know, what I don't teach, I bring people in to teach in their ex expertise. Uh, Jason the Butcher, he's he's not as significant as Jason the Mountain Man, but Jason the Butcher. Yeah. comes in and he teaches well he uh he teaches classes for me but i'll let him talk to you about what he does more but uh survivaluniversity.com is my web page um i well, i'm going to pass it off to you while i go do the sharing of this so we can get more people in here but jason just tell me a little bit about yourself tell the audience a little about yourself and what you do yeah yeah, yeah. I'm Jason the Butcher. Um, I teach, uh, my main job is I teach Army, uh, Special Forces, basically how to break down a whole animal and utilize that whole animal and cook it while they're on deployments for uh, better nutrition and cleaner eating instead of trying to live off of MREs and uh, local economy foods that, you know, we don't have the same or other countries don't have the same practices as we do the checks and balances that kind of uh, make sure, you know, food safety, stuff like that. So, you know, I, I kind of help teach them to learn how to identify a healthy animal, how to break that animal down, look for healthy liver, healthy lungs, healthy, all that kind of stuff. And then we cut it into steaks, stews. Um, they learn how to make bone broth um, to, because you know bone broth has a massive amount of nutrition so like so that's just kind of the kind of the gist of what i do um i grew up here in woodland park you know up in woodland park just west of colorado springs i've been hunting and kind of doing the same stuff jason but not on his level he's you know he's a way cooler guy than me <laughs> not really but okay um but i grew up in the mountains too hunting fishing outdoorsy survival type stuff and I was lucky enough back in 2014 to be able to utilize my craft and my knowledge and pass that along to uh, military. And it's just kind of grown from there. I do other stuff. I work with uh, Chef uh, Fernando Ruiz. We do private dinners, celebrity dinners. Um, we're working with a, a person, a celebrity right now, Beverly. She, uh, we're going to teach her how to cook. That's kind of in the that's a, that's a whole nother subject right there. Uh, besides my hunting and fishing and all that, I'm also a master gardener. Um, I took some courses through CSU and got that little certificate that says you're a master gardener. 
Um, so I, on top of hunting down my own food, I can grow it at home and, you know, do some pickling. And I think this is where this kind of comes about right now is where, where, you know, Jason's the bug out guy, like, this is what you need to prepare for. And not that I don't have that too. I have my, my FJ probably weighs an extra 150 pounds because of stuff I have in it. But I'm also my kind of my shtick is we're in a situation now where people should definitely think about not having to go to the grocery store as often for, especially like your meats, your vegetables and stuff like that. People don't, not everybody has the ability to grow a garden. I get it. You know, you live in a condo, you live in this. There, there's other answers to that, though. You can get with your your uh, your condo HOA or your apartment HOA and say, hey, can we create a space to grow vegetables as a community? That kind of stuff. Um, but as far as the meat industry goes, uh, you know, what I really focus on is, and I've gotten quite a few emails and calls lately is where do I get a whole animal and how do I butcher it so I don't have to go to the store and to me it's weird because or even Jason it, it, it's probably second nature to us well of course I had meat in my freezer I went and hunted it or you know on my end I can go um, I know all the local farmers I build relationships with them and I think our community needs to do the same thing is to learn how to build those relationships with local gardeners and whatnot or uh, growers and farmers to figure out how to get a, a side of a pig or a whole pig or a whole lamb and once i have that animal what can i do with that whole animal no. um a lot of people they they're clueless I, I mean there's chefs out there that don't know how to break down whole animals it doesn't make you an idiot or anything it's just a skill that isn't you know in our generation especially that's kind of what we grew up doing, especially if you're a mountain kid, but even our generation that grew up in the city don't, you know, they really don't know what to do. And I think now more than ever is a great opportunity to learn one, how to build a relationship, find a local farmer that raises pigs, goats, sheep, whatever, chickens, turkey, whatever floats your boat. And then two, either have, have that farmer, take that somewhere that they can process it, which is a whole nother, I could get into all kinds of crazy shit. We could talk for hours about this, or you can get with your local farmer and a guy like me or your farmer probably knows how to do it anyway and learn how to ethically and humanely harvest that animal and then break it down and package and freeze it yourself and use it literally from nose to tail. You basically, if I break down a hog, um, I can use from nose to tail, including the intestines, the, the lungs, the liver, the heart, the kidneys, the fat, you know, the, uh, even for your dog, you clean the esophagus, dry them out, smoke them or whatever. Your dog's got a chew toy. The, I mean, you should literally be able to use that whole animal. And now a pandemic comes along. You're like, well, crap, I'm going to call my farmer because I don't want to risk going to the grocery store with potentially a bunch of sick people mm -hmm. or I have some, or I caught it and I didn't know that I'm asystemic and pass it on to other people, you know, but I can call my farmer. Um, I'll just use uh, Rocky mountain organic meats, Blake um, up at gray wolf resort and say, Hey Blake, can I buy a hog from you? And he's going to be like, yeah. And then I have two choices. Can you have it slaughtered in package for me? Or can I come up and do it myself? And you bought that live animal so that gives you the legal right to do with that animal as you please so therefore now i can go to his farm and harvest my own meat and pat butcher and package my own meat so that that's kind of that's kind of what i push for people to do um and learn uh i i believe the on the military end of it they've I think they've embraced it and they learn a lot from it and they use it a lot or almost all the time as much as they can um, on a civilian level. I think it's, uh, I think it's going to be a skill that people are going to be seeking uh, not 
just because it sounds cool or anything like that. It's, it's going to be, I think it's a must. I think you should learn how to grow your own food and butcher your own meat. And, um, I like to, I like to push for hunting. Um, and you can cut me off. If there's any questions, Jay, just, uh, Oh yeah. I'll throw them out there as they come in. Yeah. I just okay. want to add real quick. I think it, what in Colorado Springs, you can have up to 10 chickens as long as they're not roosters and you can have goats. And I believe you have a pig, but not everybody has time to do that and to raise yeah. them in their backyard and feed them and care for them. They don't even know how to know how to, to take care of that though. So that's why you would contact your local farmer or rancher to do all that for them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's funny. Um, I've been looking around to buy some chicks and I, and I kick myself in the ass. You can't get, I mean, it's hard to find, you can buy roosters and male ducks and male geese and all that right now, but it's hard to find females for egg laying. You know, even if you just have three or four chickens in your backyard, just for eggs, you know, and meat later on, that's, you know, I mean, this, what's happening now is the prime example of almost becoming a closer community on a level. And I always get to ask this, you know, like right now there's a big thing where ag, big ag, you know, the large ranchers and all that have kind of taken over the processing centers, the large ones to get their beef out. And I get it to get their beef out to the grocery stores, but my how i view things is if we had we'll say i always use the example if we had 50 different small farmers around here um, some raise pigs some raise goats some raise chickens some raise this that and the other they could take the pressure off of some of that you know having you know literally having to go to the store to get your own meat so i don't, I don't want to be a dead horse but i i think people need to open their eyes um, and realize that the as warm and fuzzy as the world feels, the world isn't warm and fuzzy. You know, there's there like nobody expected this. I didn't expect something like this, not in my lifetime. Was there a potential there? Of course. What am I ready for? Well, yeah, I got three, you know, I got a ton of meat in my freezer. Uh, you know, I got pickled this and i made bone broth and i didn't waste anything and now i got my garden going again now i'm kind of kicking myself in the ass i should have bought like two or three greenhouses and i wouldn't have to worry about winter you know winter stuff we'll be ready next time around more so yeah, with we'll the gardens <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean i think and if and if anybody's interested they should look at learning how to hunt you know the Colorado Parks and Wildlife offers a fantastic program called the Rookie Sports Person. You, you taught for them on that. that. You taught for uh, for that for a while, didn't you? The Rookie yeah, Sports yeah. Program. I still, I still, I still volunteer my time. Um, and they basically take you as the city guy or whatever. Sorry, I touched my face. Um, <laughs> Do it all the time. <laughs> yeah, I know. They take people who are interested in, in hunting. And this, this is where they, they, and I know the first year they started, they had quite a few inquiries and it, and it keeps just like growing and growing. And now they've got like a laundry list of people that want to take this course, but they can only take so many people at, you know, at a time. And that's where a guy like you and you and I could come in and be like, well, I can't do that. I could do that whole program, but I'm not going to, but I could teach you the basics. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a great program. I, well, I've not been through it, but, you know, I've he heard a lot of good things about that rookie sportsman's program, but you know, there's, there are other outlets for you to go out and learn this kind of stuff, finding people like Jason or, or myself. Um, but yeah, just whatever you can yeah. do to train on this stuff or just get out there with your friend. That's a, the, that's a hunter and yeah, yeah, go out with him. Um, I know there's a lot of Facebook and, you know, like I hunt Colorado and elk addicts and all that. And I follow all those and I see some really generous people out there. And then you see some guys that are like, you know, screw you, learn how to do that on your own. I had to do it. Right. And I'm, well, you're not helping, you're not helping anybody by having that attitude. You know, my attitude is, I don't, you know, everybody's like, Oh, don't give away your honey holes. 
there's no honey holes. It's national forest. Anybody can walk up on your honey hole, whatever the hell you want to call it. Right. Uh, but but the Ricky Sportsman's Sports Persons um, program is fantastic. They teach you everything. You get to you get to go out on hunts that most people would normally get to go out on. Um, there's a lot of ranchers that you know devote their time and and their ranches to allow these people to come out and learn new skills and go bird hunting and du- you know just different stuff like that. My end, what I teach them is how to field dress. You know, once you get a deer or an elk or a bear, well, what do I do with this thing? Well, I teach them from the time it's down to cooking it at home. So we, we go through the whole process, skinning, gutting, butchering, packaging, and then seasoning, cooking, and eating it. So there's where I help. Um, I think Jason and I are talking about doing something similar, kind of comboing his skill set with my skill set, you know, the first couple of days. And I'll let him touch on it a little bit more. Uh, first couple of days you'll spend with me and you'll learn how to take from a live animal and butcher it. And then from there, Jason's going to take you out. And that's basically what you're going to live on for however many days he wants to torture you. <laughs> The, yeah, <laughs> right. It's torture. <laughs> it's not torture. We're in camp, you know. It's it's not that bad. But yeah, I mean, I think what our idea for this class would be that we've been kicking around for quite a while is, like you said, he's with you are with Jason, the butcher, for a couple of days, learning how to process that animal, break it down, and then with me, we're gonna we're gonna tan the hide. We're gonna he, you're gonna cook some stuff with him, but we're also gonna make some but some. Uh, jerky over the fire and smoke it and make a, a smoke rack out of the hide and make some bone tools and then learn some other survival skills, you know, fire starting, shelter building, you know, the other key stuff, but that's for a different time. But yeah, if you're interested in those classes, uh, this type of class, let us know. And we'll, we'll, you know, light a fire under our butts and get it out there faster. Uh, but he's talking about me, lighting up right. fire, not so much him. It's <laughs> but I will fun. tell you that class because we do have to purchase enough animals for the amount of people. It's not. It's going to be you know a kind of pricey class, just so you, you're aware because the cost of the animals. But you do walk away with the knowledge and the meat from those animals that we process. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, the cost is is definitely for some people an issue and I, and I get it, but if you understand the meat market and the fluctuation of everything, like uh, beef could be at a buck 26 live weight today. And then tomorrow, you know, it could be two sixty five. you know, you just don't know. So we got to kind of play the middle road and that's why, you know, paying for the animal and I want to take care of my farmers. I don't want to like lowball them just, so I make money and be like, well, Hey man, um, it's all about helping each other and taking care of each other. And that gives whoever comes to the class, that'll give you an opportunity to also build that relationship with that farmer. So now you have a connection with a farmer that you would have never probably never found or figured out. Um, that's kind of how I've built my relationships is just like one by one introducing myself. And hey, can I buy this from you? Can I buy that from you? Um, right now, people are like, where can I get box beef? So I send them to, to different different people like Kraft, Carl Kraft Beef or um, Rocky Mountain Organic Farms for the pork. And, and so there's not, there's not a lot of chicken. You know, chicken's kind of hard. Chicken processing plants are pretty much non-existent around here. Um, I, I believe uh, up north in Black Forest, like Corner Post does it. They do their own, but they're usually sold out. So I also, I'm trying to encourage other people to look at if you have a little chunk of land, you know, maybe start off with chickens. They're simple, you know, yeah, low maintenance. Feed, you know, um, rabbits, rabbit meat's fantastic. You know, rabbits aren't hard to raise. They grow fast and you can harvest them. Um, I don't know. I just think we're in a different time and people uh, lack of a better term or saying people have been caught with their pants down and now they don't know what to do, you know, and now we have a gro- Now we have grocery stores packed with potentially sick people, you know, 
arguing over that last pound of ground beef that the guy in the back just set out uh, when realistically uh, I could, I could get into price. I'll, I'll just, I'll just ballpark everything. So you could, you could go buy yourself a little home grinder for a hundred bucks. Um, we'll say you can go buy a side, of uh, pork. Like we'll say one of Blake's pigs probably for 500 bucks and you got 80 plus pounds or minus somewhere in there, but you're eating organic. You know, the thing has no GMOs beautiful white meat it's a heritage breed pig so you're i'm gonna say for a thousand bucks you'll be able to put meat in your freezer and you wouldn't be going to the store right now for at least a month let me throw a question or a statement out there real quick that came in from ginger she, she's definitely intrigued by the class but she's a little intimidated from the skill level that she feels it could be, be beneficial who do you think that this is a class one of your butchering classes would be geared towards all right, so if any of my army friends are watching, <laughs> um, please don't beat my ass later on. Anybody can take this course. And, I mean, you could have zero skills, which that's kind of I, – I actually prefer teaching people that have no skills and that are afraid of stuff like this. Um, I've, I've, I've dealt with soldiers that have zero skills, are afraid to death of animals. They grew up in the city. Just like, I don't even want to touch a chicken. I, you know, I don't know what to do. And by the end of the day, they're like, oh my God, that was the most one, like crazy thing I ever did Two empowering thing. And now I'm eating this. So don't, don't be afraid. I mean, this is, this is how you learn. I, I just didn't like wake up at, you know, five years old and jump on the back of an elk and slit its throat and got it <laughs> skin and all that. Um, no, this is, this is any skill level and yeah. beginner. And, you know, I, and I'm not the end all be all. I mean, I, I, I have 35 plus years of butchering and, and all that kind of stuff, but I love getting other people in there that have other skills. Cause I learned from them. And I'll tell you right now, I'll steal your idea. I, I do that all the time. Yep. I won't tell you. I won't tell you I stole your idea, but I'm, I'm going to use it to put yeah. my stamp on it. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> I will but say, no, don't be scared. Sorry, I'm a little froggy here. Um, oh, class like yours or classes like mine, but more specifically, since we're talking about butchering, they are very hands on classes. You're going to have to get in there and get your hands dirty if you really want to learn something. Um, the class that I helped out uh, Jason with, with the Army here at uh, a couple months ago, I brought in a bunch of rabbits. There was a rabbit for each soldier, um, and they had to dispatch their own rabbit. Uh, and it's, you know, you really need to learn how to do that and how to learn how to learn how to do it um, humanely, so you're not the animal's not suffering. And that's something we do teach. So it's it's a quick, clean kill. But you know, if you're to the level where you're not comfortable to do that yet. You know, we never force people to do anything that they're not comfortable doing yet. Oh, no. I mean, absolutely not. It's, um, I've, I, I and those who have trained with me understand this. One, I'll, I never treat an animal horribly. No. Um, you don't, you don't yell at it. You don't kick it. You don't throw it. You don't, period. If I see an animal before we're going to do what the, the deed, as I call it, and it looks really stressed, then I leave it alone. You yeah. know, I just try and leave that, let that animal relax a little bit. Let it, you know, you, I just, I, I can't stand when, you know, you see these videos of these, these pigs or goats or see any animal just getting kicked and dragged around and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely not. We do not. And if I caught somebody doing it, I would probably stab you. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not how you treat. No. And, and I always relate it to would you, if you, your home, your pet at home, your dog, your cat, your bird, or whatever. Um, sorry, people texting me. Um, would you treat your dog like, lack of a better term again, like shit before you had to euthanize him oh because he's old or sick or whatever? Absolutely not. So why would you do that to any animal? Period. You know, right. um, as far as getting in it, yeah, you're. You should you, you should expect to get some blood, guts, poop, urine, 
you know, things happen and getting in there and getting dirty, that's part of it. But if, if you're emotionally uncomfortable and you just, you, you can't do it. I have no, absolutely no, no judgment with, with you stepping away and gathering your thoughts. I'll talk you through it. And if you still don't under, you know, you still just can't accept it, then we'll go find a safe place for you to go sit and we'll take care of it. And then you can come back when, when, when your thoughts have, have come to you. Yeah. I tell you, anytime I have to dispatch an animal, um, for me, even it's, it's not an easy, easy thing to do. And, and you do, you know, you're very thankful for that animal and, and, uh, just treat oh, it with respect. You have that, to be. It's always I've, been that way. It's an ethical, I think, growing up being a hunter, you just, you know, you yeah. treat it with respect. I mean, I, I've <laughs> not to, not to tell, you know, tell the world my, my issues, but just to kind of humanize and give you more of an idea. I, I see a therapist because believe it or not, taking, taking and uh, taking something's life can literally crush your soul. Now, now imagine doing that over and over and over again. I take yeah. no pleasure in it whatsoever. Right. But I, but I also have an understanding. They were put on this earth for food. They are food, you know, right. uh, I mean, a vegan can argue with me and this, I, I don't, I'm not getting into political debates and vegan <laughs> debates and all this. My belief is that's food, but I also have that belief in, I'm not going to torture that food. I'm going to yeah. do everything I can to that ensure that animal was not stressed out. I'm also going to ensure that my students aren't stressed out. Have I had situations with students where we kind of got into it? Yeah, but we're all adults. We get through it and, you know, we move on. But I think, I think we're at a time now where people should really look hard at the way they, they do things um, at home. Uh, and, I, and I hate, and it's sad that it had to come in this fashion and form, whether you believe it's COVID, you know, not a thing, a thing or whatever. Obviously something's going on because everybody's kind of chilling out at home right now. Um, but I, I think this is a good time for people to kind of sit down and, and rethink, how do I grocery shop? How do I, you know, should I start a garden? How do I start that garden? You can go to your, your county extensions office. They have gardening programs. You can email a guy like me. I'll share whatever knowledge I have. I have no problem with that. Um, you could call, you know, get a hold of Jason. Like, uh, what, what the hell does bug out mean? Well, <laughs> yeah. you know, like I, you know, well, it's what those crazy ass survivalist prepper people do. Just kidding. yeah, right. Um, well, I mean, I mean, if you have a question about gardening or butchering or anything, and anything related to survival, I know somebody, and I'm sure Jason Nor also knows somebody that can can help you out with that. But real quick, we just had a question that uh, the class that we were were talking about. We're talking about a a butchering class. You're out with Jason for two days and me for three days. Um, the class isn't on the books yet, but we're going to probably try to do it here and this year sometime. It'll yeah, be out gotta, there. Obviously, we got to figure out when the 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 crazy virus is going to pass and we can go back to normal-ish. I don't think we're ever going to go back to normal. but No, which know. is fine. I think it's a good thing, honestly, I mean, when we come out horrible. the other side. As horrible as it, yeah. If you look out the, you look out the other side. It's like, well, maybe this is going to build more community. Maybe it's going to drive more traffic to local farmers. Maybe it's going to get people to really understand, like, know where your food is. Um, I hate to say it. Maybe I don't hate to say it, but I do hate to say it. If this makes sense. It's going to maybe push people to want to learn how to hunt. Um, well, to be self-sustainable, hunting, self gardening, in some way, yeah, do absolutely. stuff. What I do. Um, in, I, I, Go ahead. Go ahead, Jay. No. Oh, what I was going to say was, in as far as like people think about, oh, well, you're talking about butchering at home. That's going to be super easy, blah, blah, you know, for you, Jason. And yeah, I talk, you know, um, my friend Beverly, you know, anytime her, me and Fernando are showing her how to cook something and she, we're like, oh, it's easy. And she's like, stop saying it's easy. Not, this isn't that easy, but it truly is. Once you get the fundamentals um, 
butchering at home can be fairly easy. And the other thing is, if you think about it, you really you can't really screw it up when you're learning because worst case scenario, you grind it or you chop it up into stew meat, right? You're still able to eat that meat. And then any trim you're not sure of, you don't want to eat, that goes in with making a broth or a stock or whatever, including the bones. So you can't get too intimidated. Um, you just got to find the right person, me, uh, to teach you how to do those things. So how do they get a hold of you? I mean, if they want to, do you, outside of doing that class with me, do you teach butchering classes or cooking classes or something somewhere else yeah. that they can get a hold of you? Yeah, you know what? Um, I put a little teaser out there asking people if they want to see me do some uh, butcher videos and I think in cooking or whatever, because uh, wild game seems to be the, the toughest thing people have issues with. So I might start a little video series, YouTube channel. Um, we're working on some other projects. If And I do in-house group. Like if you got a group of buddies or gals or whatever. Yeah, I do private classes. All you got to do is, the, for me, the easiest way to get a hold of me is through like just Facebook Messenger or email me. Email me, it's the best. You just go to jasonhour.com and then click on contact. And then just shoot me an email and, and we can go from there. Yeah. I just, you're talking about videos. There is a video out on my YouTube channel, YouTube channel where I joined up with you and we rendered some bear fat for pemmican. Yeah. So if you're interested in learning how to render bear fat, check that video <laughs> out. I mean, that's not a normal well, thing. Fat but, in general. Right? right. Yeah. I mean, it would work for anything, but we're doing bear you know, fat because I'm um, just doing something different. The thing is, is, uh, um, like, self or uh preservation like canning people don't realize you can pickle meat yeah once you pickle the meat you put it in your garage in a, in a cool out of the sun area and you've got meat forever you know um curing you one of the you you get a hog you buy a let's say you buy a whole hog and you're like well how do i cure it well i can oh, teach you how to cure it sure. so you can you know that's a little bit more in depth and that's a little bit more of an investment but it is achievable. I mean, anybody can do it. If, if like I said, if you have a little bit of, of money to invest, um, sausage making, I love to make sausage. I love to teach people how to make sausage, uh, you know, stuff like that. It's, it's fun. You can make a party out of it. We could do whiskey, you know, do a whiskey pairing and sausage class or, you know, just stuff like that. Yeah. They can absolutely get a hold of me and we, we can do some private classes. Well, let's step back real quick uh, for the people in Colorado Springs area. Where can they go to, to talk to a farmer or a rancher? I think you might've mentioned it, but I, if I missed it. So I'm sure if I yeah, missed so it, other people did it. You, you know, just locally, I'll throw out like Rocky mountain organic meats. Um, they're up at Gray Wolf Resort up by Victor, Colorado. And then you've got Colorado Craft Beef. They're up by Denver. Um, I think you got Corner Post around here. Um, River Bear Meats. That's uh, Brunson. He, Justin is a freaking fantastic guy. I love him to death. Um, he's got his own meat company. You can just basically, if you just Google around, you'll, you'll find some some local stuff so how, did, farms. how does that whole process work once from as the time that, as, as once they contact that farmer what what are they what are they going to expect down the road um like craft we'll use craft jeff at craft beef so you can go online and you can order box beef from them you know you pick your box or whatever your cuts and then he'll ship it to you uh, you can buy a quarter or half or whatever, and they'll butcher it and, and you know, have it butchered and shipped to you. Um, same with Rocky Mountain Organic Meats. They're just getting that set up right now where you can buy a, a butchered hog or a half a butchered hog. Um, river so they, bear Meats. So they, they'll send you just a, like a, a half of a hog or a half of a cow. You'll just basically get a big slab of meat. No, 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 no. You can get it butchered, but if you want to learn to do it yourself, uh -huh. then you can get a hold of me and I'll navigate all that for you. That whole that whole part of the system. Right on. Hey, just just a heads up, for some reason my battery, my phone has been draining and it's plugged in. 
All right. Well, you have that link. You could always jump over to your laptop if you need to, right? Yeah. Let me uh, let me try that. <laughs> All right. Because my phone, I don't know why my phone is being drained while it's plugged in. That makes yeah, no sense to too me. Too much power. I know that's what you. Um. Doing. So I did take some. I asked before we got started what some of the tools that Jason uses. If you guys are um, interested in um some of the knives he uses i'm going to go ahead and put these out here um you know that kind all of right, I'll try and load up all right i'm going to put these out here one at a time you want to talk about each of these knives as i put thanks. them out there thanks john thanks for that i just got texted from john mcgallard yeah thanks for that bro oh so the uh your Vitronox Swiss Army cutlery, cutlery knife. What do you use that for? Um, well, do your thing. I'll wait. Yeah, hold on one second. Yeah. Hey, I'm almost done. So notice I did put a, a Amazon link to each of these. So if you guys are serious about um, wanting to butcher your own meats and learn this skill, um, these are the tools that Jason uses. Uh, the Amazon link is so that, you know, you can buy it through our affiliate program. So if you're enjoying these kind of videos, you're going to support us by, by using those links. Um, Jason should be back here in a moment, but we'll talk about those knives once he gets back on. There did we you go. Mean to, did you mean to jump out? Am I there? Are you, on the, are you on the laptop now? Yeah, I'm on my laptop now. I think it was just switching over. Yeah, there's a little bit of there's lag a little time. bit of lag between you talking. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we're gonna have to deal with that. Um, can you hear me though, too? I can hear you. I just can't watch your face because then your mouth is moving when you're not talking. <laughs> That's really weird. But yeah, I mean, you want to talk about the knives, the tools that you use for butchering? Yeah, so it's pretty basic, a six inch semi flexible um, curved Vic Victorinox boning knife. And you don't, I mean, you don't have to get the Victorinox. Dexter makes some, actually Doll Strong makes a really good knife. Um, I got, I've got every like knife you could imagine, but for butchering, it's basically a boning knife, what's called a breaking knife, which is like a 10 inch butcher's knife. And then a little boning saw, you can get like a 16 inch or a 22 inch or a 25 inch LEM. And that's pretty much, that's all you need. What is a boning <laughs> knife used for? So the boning knife is mainly, um, it's what you're gonna use to seam out the muscles and stuff like that, debone the animal, um, cut. It's basically just for meat. And then your portion cutter is to portion cut, obviously steaks, stuff like that. And then your saw is to cut through bone. A meat cleaver, you can pick up a meat cleaver like a Dexter or a Mercer or something like that. That's that's for busting through bone and cartilage. All right, cool. Hold on one second, my dog. Right. One second. Don't butcher your dog. I'm not gonna butcher my dog. <laughs> Um, got, uh, I got my sidekick here. I got to bring my sidekick in. That's not a dog. Hazel. <laughs> Hazel. But anyway, um, yeah, so to get back to butchering and, and things like that, I, I think people get really intimidated and some people even get grossed out by the word butcher. And butcher, butcher doesn't have to be, it, it's not a dirty word. Butchering is just basically, you know, it, how do I describe this? It's funny to see the reaction of somebody that sees that live animal and then I'll dispatch it and I'll skin it and I'll gut it. And then they'll just see a carcass. And then once th they see the carcass, they're fine with it. Right. And what I want people, what, what I like to teach, you know, like we just talked about like humane and ethical and all that kind of stuff. But I, but I also want people to, to feel that, sorry about that, to feel that emotion when you're taking that being, that animal's life. 
And then I also preach this a lot too. You're going to taste the difference when you cook that animal that you harvested or killed, you know, on your own. It's going to taste a billion times better, no matter how horribly you, you cook it, it's still going to taste better. And it, and to be honest with you, going straight to the farmer and knowing where your food comes from, which I know is a huge thing. And that's like the, the shtick nowadays, knowing where your meat comes from. Um, you know what you're getting. You can see where the animal lives. You can, you know, you can see what it's being fed. You can help feed it if you talk to the farmer, probably. You can be a part of that process or you can be as disconnected as you want to be a part of that process. You know, it's entirely up to you. And I, 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 think, I think when the animal, wow, well, I'm getting some curious to that. How's that? Um, still pretty bad. For me? Yeah. Yeah. Here, let me turn my, maybe it's my speaker. Yeah, it might be. That work? Yep. Well, uh, nope, still a lot of feedback. Huh. Do you have your phone going too? Um, it was, but it's a, it's nowhere near you. Okay. That's a little bit better now. There, I threw the phone over on the chair. Yeah. Yeah. And that must've been the phone I was hearing. Um, I was going to say, when you get the animals from the supermarket or wherever, there's a yeah. good chance that that animal is very stressed when they dispatched it and all that stress and the, the adrenaline and endorphins and whatever is stuck in that meat and you're actually tasting that. So if, if you are getting that animal from your farmer, there's a good chance that they don't have that yeah. stress and it doesn't have that weird taste in it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I just, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. I mean, I think that could be a whole nother episode yeah. about the agriculture, like the whole agriculture and buying from a grocery store and, you know, this, that, and the other. I know grocery stores in general are starting to try and do the right thing as much as they possibly can. Um, the reality, the reality of it is grocery stores exist because there's so many freaking people on the planet and there's no other way to feed people. You know, not everybody's going to be able, not everybody has a luxury you and I have of, you know, knowing how to hunt, knowing some farmers, knowing how to butcher, knowing how to cook, you know, it's just the reality of it where I think we're a niche, a niche market, you could say in the world of food. Um, I just, I just hope people embrace this horrible situation we're all in right now and really take a step back and think, what can I do differently now I mean, we can't change the past. What happened, happened, move on, you know, get get the frick over it. But what can I do to, to look at the next time? Because it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. I mean, that's just that's just life in general. It's not a matter of if you're going to die. It's just a matter of when you're going to die. So it's not a matter of if this is going to happen again. It's a matter of when it's going to happen. You know, history pre history repeats itself over and over and over again. So... I think, and I, I'm, and I'm not here to capitalize on everybody's, you know, lack of knowledge and all that kind of stuff. I, I just, that's just not me. I probably, I give away more knowledge than, than most. And I think you're, you're the same type of person as I am. Um, I feel like sharing is, is better than, you know, don't get me wrong. I love to pay my bills. You know, who does it? I mean, we all got bills. We're all, you know, this isn't the world of free everything. Um, but I also, I also think that people need to learn these skills and people really need to um, embrace the situation and, and think about, you know, Hey, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I put away for the year and I save 1200 bucks and I go buy that quarter cow or, I split it with a couple friends. That way, if something like this ever happens again, I don't have to be part of that, you know, rush going to get toilet paper and then go back two days later only to find out that there's no meat. 
you know, like, oh shit, I wasn't thinking about me because everybody's taking toilet paper. Well, I wasn't thinking about toilet paper. I was thinking about, you know, where I need, I need vegetables. I need, I bought, I was, I don't want to touch my face. Um, <laughs> I just, I'm trying not to, but my allergies are really bad. Um, I personally was buying dry goods, you know, rice, oatmeal, like going back to the, to Jason's side of it. Like if the, if this got really bad, you know, kind of my conspiracy theorist, wacky tinfoil wearing head, you know, um, if, if I need to pack everything up and go, I was thinking more dry goods, you know, what can I sustain out in the woods for a month or whatever I needed to and be able to do it at home. You know, you can eat those things at home too. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. The stores got feedback again. My phone is nowhere, bro. Yeah, that's weird. Um, it's, it's my tinfoil. Let me, maybe. Let me there. Put that hat back on. Uh, most people that I was seeing at the, the kickoff of this were buying very perishable food items. They were worried about bread and milk and stuff like that that they were going to run out of instead of buying the stuff that they're going to store. But beyond that, you know, what we're talking about today is the sustainable living. Even if you went out and bought 300 pounds of flour and 300 pounds of grains and rice and beans, eventually that's still going to run out. But being able to do a garden in your backyard is going to you learn how to do it. It's going to sustain you year after year after year. Granted, you're not going to be able to grow at a typical garden during the winter here in Colorado. That's why hunting is important or growing your own food, chickens and uh, cows and whatever else. Well, you know, if you look at your vegetable garden, you can even, you know, and, and I know people that know people that, you know, and I've got a, a really good friend out there, Michelle, that you can learn to can those vegetables over the right. summer. So guess, guess what you have for the winter? You got canned vegetables, you know? Yeah. Um, and if you can't grow it, man, that's buy so it. right. Buy it and then can the stuff that you buy. And you can go to the farmer's markets and buy really good, fresh produce uh, from those places instead of going to your local grocer to buy it. Uh, and yeah, yeah can that yeah, stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think learning, learning just basic cooking skills. Um, the first, okay. So the very first thing I did when all this started before we went into any lockdown and my wife was like totally ecstatic and, uh, Carly Smith, the fairy gut mother, she's going to love me for this. The first thing I did was made like four gallons of, of broth. I just took vegetable ends, and I, I keep all my bones. So when I hunt or I teach butchering or whatever, and people don't want the bones, I take the, I bring the bones home and I wrap them up and I put them in the freezer. Um, and I just started taking bones and vegetable ends and just started piling crap in my, in my pot, cooking it down, filling jars up. Uh, the funny thing was, you know, it was still, it wasn't, boiling boiling but it was still it was at that low boil and i was pouring it into my jars and then i was putting the seals on it and we're laying in bed because we got our house is pretty small jason's been to my house and my you hear this pop 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 my wife's like what the hell is that and i said oh the jars are popping which means the gas the heat and the gas is expanded and it sealed those jars so you know i think we've gone through almost all of it and i need to get my ass in gear and make some more broth. But not only did that give us something nutritious to have and drink, but it also gave me something to do instead of sitting around watching, you know, not that I don't do this, um, binge watching Netflix or whatever. It, it gave me, it, I, I literally, even though I do it all the time, I felt I had a bigger pur purpose as as who I am that I needed to get this done. Like, okay, something is going on in this world. Even though I make broth and all that crap all the time, it gave me more of a purpose. And the cool thing is, I think if 
if you have kids and stuff like that, you can include your kids and you, they get to learn things, you know? Um, I know it sucks being stuck at home right now. Uh, some of us were kind of, I know Jason's a little bit on the spectrum of isolation isn't a big, a huge deal. You know, it kind of screws with your brain, but you calm down for 10 minutes and you're like, I don't want to be around anybody anymore. <laughs> this, this is ideal world for us. Yes. But, uh, um, we're, 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 a, we're, a, we're an animal that needs social structures and stuff Absolutely. like that. So bring your kids into that social structure. Um, I, I've taught kids how to, how to butcher chickens. I mean, you start off with chickens, it's easy. And then, you know, there's, you got multiple meals for, with chicken. Oh, great. I got a carcass. You throw it in there. You're making more broth because you guys are drinking it. You don't have to just drink broth. You can use it to make a soup. You can use uh, Carly. I asked Carly this. Um, and she's a great resource too. Uh, the fairy gut mother. She, uh, she uses it in her oatmeal. Um, you can learn to pickle cabbage because I was at the store. There was cabbage. I'm like, nobody's taking cabbage. Buy heads of cabbage and pickle cabbage. It's easy. You went over a really high level way to make that broth. Is there anything technical about it? I mean, anything fancy, any temperature that they need to worry about when pouring it into the jars or anything like that? No, I mean, it. it is literally that simple. Um, and the reason why... Now, if I was going to jar it to last like, you know, the next five years or three years or whatever, I would get a little bit more technical. But for something in this, that's a whole nother, like another class or something like that. But for the simplicity of having these extra, you know, carrot ends, celery ends, it doesn't matter. Broccoli, collard, it doesn't matter what you put in it. It's literally put it in a pot. And then put a cut, you know, I'm going to use, uh, what did I do? I've got like a 22 quart pot, right? Not very big. And I think I put three cups of salt in there. And then I just threw peppercorns and a bunch of herbs and like, I just piled a bunch, to be honest with you, I just piled a bunch of shit in it. Plus Where can people oh, get the yeah. bones? Go to, you can buy like, um, Save your chicken carcasses for one. Two, anything bone in that you buy at the store. Like for example, you go to Costco and you buy a bone in pork butt. Okay. And you all you do is dice the meat off that bone, wrap the bone up, throw it in the freezer. You can throw that in there. Um, you're you're gonna get the most nutrition out of the knuckle of the bone, you know, like the knee joint or a shank joint or something like that. But generally, just use um, a lot of people, they'll see uh, shank pieces for asabuco. And those those types of cuts are starting to pop up now in the in the um, supermarkets. Like I've never seen shank at Safeway before in my life. There's like 20 of them. Hmm. And I literally watched five people stare at it and like, what is that? And then I I stopped and I took the time and I was like, this is what you do. And they were gone. They're like, oh, dirt, dirt, dirt. I'm like, yeah, it's <laughs> super easy to cook with a shank, yeah. you know, um, go to the butcher shop. If you, if you don't have a butcher shop, you know, hit up the um, Safeway because I've noticed, too, this is a kind of a cool paradigm thing that's going on. Um, the larger Safeways have actual butchers in them now. I don't know, if, like the, the one in Monument has it, the one in Rock Room has one. I think the one in Woodland Park does too, as a matter of fact. Um, the one out on Uena and Circle, they have one. Ask those guys, hey, do you have bone? Do you have any bones? If they say no, say, hey, can I get soup bones? That's all you need, just get some soup bones. And all right, I'm 99 or 100% sure they're gonna save you your, the soup bones. Yeah. You, you ordered them and stuff. Same with fat. Um, I started seeing uh, trimmings, fat trimmings, pork fat and uh, beef fat packaged at Safeway. Nobody knows what to do with that. You and I, we did it with uh, bear fat. You can render it down. You can 
I mean, there's, there's so many things you can do with fat. You can cook with it. You can seal meat, you know, make riette, which is just like cooked down seasoned meat poured over fat, you know, pour the fat over it in the jar, seal it up, put it in the fridge or whatever, or not. It doesn't matter at that point. And then you double boil it and then you got freaking, you got, you got a, a meat, you got food right there. Do you know how to yeah. salt meat, preserve it that way? Yeah. Curing, uh, curing that, you know, for, as easy as curing is it's as hard it can be you got to have i can't just uh i just can't throw a curing class and then you guys you know hang it in your in your in your shed or whatever and hope for the best you know we you do need some ideal conditions to do that um the right humidity you know the right temperature the 30 40 degrees 72 percent humidity just depending on upon what you're doing um it is achievable i mean you could go back i mean we could get into like recycling uh old refrigerators right and turning that refrigerator into a cure cabinet type situation right so i mean there's just there's just so many options out there oh no i'm just kidding um there's so many options out there and there's so many subjects. I think we could sit here for the next six weeks of whatever. If we're locked down for six or eight weeks, we could sit here and talk about all the options and all the things we could do. But for today, I think people should start looking at learning one, possibly learning how to hunt two, reaching out to guys like me or Jason and asking us questions you know just you know what, what do you suggest for this what do you suggest for that um and really start exploring who your local farmers are whether they're raising chickens pork beef lamb goats goats like the most eaten thing on the face of the earth um a lot of people are like oh goat i love goat um if you cook goat just if, if you're intimidated by it and you love curry, just bury it in curry sauce. It'll taste fantastic, you know? Um, but staying on track, I think those are the things pe people should really start thinking about right now is I need to build a relationship with my local farmer. I need to build a relationship with, and I'm not the only cat in town. There's guys in Denver, you know, that, and, there, there's there's guys all over the country. I can I could drop names all day long that can help you with these things and are willing to help because they're just they're fantastic people. Um, I know everybody thinks you know butchers were like the grumpy dude in the back with a meat cleaver and a knife. Yeah, that's true to an extent, but we're actually you know cuddly teddy bear type guys. Um, I call that. So you piss us off and then I make you into fresh sausage. But uh, um, anyway, just really start thinking about building those relationships with those types of people. And um, I hope I hope this helps and get your brain thinking um, as far as where we are today and what the future could hold. Um, I think that we really need to not just embrace it for the short term and then in six months from now be like oh it's over life is good no embrace it now and become a healthier human being and the healthier human the healthier we are as human beings by sourcing local by learning to butcher our own stuff by learning to grow or buying from you know really good producers will make us healthier and less susceptible to viruses and and, and stuff like this you know, or is it going to cure us? Well, hell no, but it might help you become less susceptible to situations. And now you're, you're, you're also a self-sustaining person. You know, um, another way to look at it too is I, I have a lot of meat in my freezer and yeah, I could hoard it and be like, oh, get a, you know, it's my meat, stay away. But did I do that? Did I offer you meat, Jason? I, I offer... I, I mean, I offered everybody, if somebody needed meat, I'm like, just call me. 
it might not be the most beautiful cut because some army kid was learning how to cut it or army gal, but it's still a piece of meat. You know, you can still make a chili out of it, make a stew out of it, make stir fry out of it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be pretty to be edible. Um, I'm not, I'm not a five star, five diamond, five Michelin star, whatever the hell you want to call me. I'm a butcher. And at the end of the day, we're in a situation where we need to sustain food and who cares what it looks like. It's clear. Yeah. yeah. Well, we don't have any questions about food. I'm going to take this headset away from you. So if you talk, I want me to hear you because I got the feedback's horrible. But I did have a question that I'll answer. It's about wild edibles, um, using pine needles and bark for food. It's a little off topic here. But yeah, I mean, your pine tree can uh, give you some nutrients, but it, the pine needles are really high in vitamin C. That's about all you're going to get out of those. Um, you can make a pine needle tea and drink it for that. And it's also uh, uh, anti, like an antioxidant, or I don't think that's the right word, but like for chest colds, things like that will help you with that. But you're going to boil it to make a tea or if fresh buds uh, coming uh, spring, you get those fresh buds, you can just pull them off and eat them and they're very sweet and citrusy. Uh, the bark is more of a filler. You're not going to get a lot of nutrients out of it. It's just going to make your stomach feel a little bit full. Uh, a lot, I keep seeing people saying you boil it like noodles. That's not true. They've never gone out there and actually done it. That's not the way you do it. It's like chewing hard freaking leather. Um, the best way I've found to actually cook bark, you take the inner cambium layer. That's the white layer in between the wood and the outer bark that you see. Cambium layers, that center bark, you crisp it up uh, over a fire and uh, cook it kind of like a potato chip. Very fibrous, very crunchy, but it's easier to eat. It's more palatable. Uh, or cut it in strips and fry it with bacon fat. It's really good with bacon fat, <laughs> believe it or not. It kind of softens it up and makes it taste like bacon. You're getting a little bit of nutrients from it, but my, mostly you're getting the nutrients from the fat. It just really, it's just a filler. The pine bark is just a filler. And you're not going to survive a long time off of it. But um, put this back up. Oh, are you on? Okay. Yeah, I'm back here. Hey, I just saw some comments. Thanks, Hunter. Yeah, what's a comment? Um, I don't know. Some about how it's fantastic. Oh, 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 I just read some comments. Yeah. So anybody have any questions? If you're not on my Facebook page or on the YouTube doing questions, I won't be able to see them. So hopefully anything I shared this out to, um, if you do have questions and we don't answer them, I apologize for that. It doesn't always come through the feed that we're looking at. But right now, if you do have any questions, this is a great time to ask. You have anything else to add, Jason? No, not at all. I think uh, I think I just did my my normal ramble. Um, I hope. I, I think I think my biggest hope is that people realize that they're we're here to help. You know, we can. Yeah. Think everything's teachable. I mean, if that guy on the other side of the computer can learn something, then anybody can. I'm talking about Jason. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, anyway, yeah, I mean, don't don't be afraid. Don't be scared of it. Um, kind of embrace what's going on. Take an opportunity to learn some new skills. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions. Reach out to me. Reach out to Jason. Uh, I don't know everything. I know I know my craft very well. Uh, and I love my craft. I'm very passionate about it. I'm passionate about food. I'm passionate about people. I'm passionate about educating people. Um, there's just, you know, what's this question here? For, For someone, someone who I'm doesn't eat meat, how could I live in the winter without storing in jars? You're gonna have a hard time. Oh man, yeah. Um, you can dry certain foods. Um, dehydrate, yeah, get a yeah. dehydrator. Dehydrate a lot of uh, fruits, dehydrate vegetables. Um, you freeze dry. Those freeze are pricey. Dry, yeah. Probably freeze a good freeze dryer is probably going to run you about four thousand um, dollars. Stock up on rice. That. Yeah, rice, beans. You can buy. You can buy those non-perishables. I mean, I've got you know 
bags and bags of rice and beans at my house. But uh, as far as being sustainable through winter, if you're not going to store stuff, it's pretty difficult. Uh, look into Mylar bags, doing uh, um, an oxygen absorbers. You take your rice and your beans or flour or anything like that, and you put them in that Mylar bag and throw that oxygen absorber in there, seal it up. Um, I do have a video out there if you're interested in it for uh, storing non-perishable dry goods in Mylar bags. But maybe yeah, at, yeah, just maybe kind of think of lines of like a, almost like ramen where you dehydrate and crush your vegetables and then just put them, you know, store them in the bags. And then you can almost make like your own Insta soups, you know, uh, find a good video out there on how to make ramen noodles, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. That was another thing that disappeared out in the, uh, um, in the stores was ramen noodles. I mean, gone. Gone in seconds. Oh yeah, I know. Pasta that too, they're gone. gone. Pasta is simple to make. I mean, you got an egg, some flour, some salt. You can make some pasta. You make your own pasta at home. Um, it's, those those are just kinds of the things I think people and I and I hope people start to look at looking for tutorial videos. And you know, I know Jason's working on stuff. I'm working on stuff. We're gonna be working together. I'm working with uh, Fernando Ruiz. Um, he's, he's a very well-known chef. Uh, he's been on chop. He born chop. What did, what the hell did Fernando went chopped? He beat Bobby Flay. He was on guys grocery games. Um, him and I do a lot of stuff together. We're going to do some videos. Um, yeah. So just, just kind of be on the lookout and please, please, please feel free to reach out to me. Okay. What kind of, what meat would last longer? Beef, pork, chicken? Pork. You can cure pork. All right. Um, so cu curing curing pork is the the longest or the best cured, thing to do. Smoked jerky or frozen. So uh, cure. I'll do it in order here. I would say cured, then your jerky, then smoked, and then frozen. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, smoked or jerk jerk beef lasts quite a long while too. I'm not really sure exactly how long. But it'll store for a while, especially if you can get all that moisture out of it. If you freeze it too, if you uh, vacuum seal it, mm -hmm. I mean, if you do it right, I mean, I've got I've got a moose down there in my freezer that I've had for three and a half years. I pulled a roast out the other day, and it was perfect. Yeah, you know, it it was uh, it was in a vacuum seal, and then I wrapped it in butcher paper because all you're trying to do is keep that frost off of it. Also check out pemmican, uh, that rendering bear fat video. We use, I use that bear fat to make pemmican. Um, you basically dehydrate or dry meat, you powder it, whatever kind of meat you want. And then you, uh, it's gotta be completely dry, no fat in it. You gotta render out all the fat, dry meat. And then you can, if you want, you can put fruits like dried fruits, uh, back they used to, well, they still do, but, um, Blueberries, pulverized or dry blueberries, because they're high in antioxidants, high in nutrients. Um, you dry those blueberries, uh, powder them up, put them in with the meat, and then you put rendered fat over top of it. And I think if you do it properly, pemmican will store for like five years. Uh, and I think all they used to do was wrap it in like a, a cloth and it would keep for for a long time. It's, and, you know, what they used to use to travel across the Great Plains. Um, yeah. I don't know. You have anything to add with pemmican? Do you know what? You don't mess with it too much, do you? I don't mess with it too much. I know it. I know what it is. Um, yeah. And, you know, once you put that fat over the top of all that, you've, you've created pretty much a, a, a seal of, of anything getting in there. Um, not only that, I would imagine if you double, I've never done this, so you can tell me if I'm an idiot. You're an I mean, idiot. If you, okay, thanks. <laughs> I would think if you double boiled it, that fat would just leak, you know, melt down into the meat and the vegetables and you can just eat it that way because there's a tremendous amount of calories and fat right. in, a, in a survival situation that you would want, you know, and that, and that sort of thing. That goes back to 
and this is probably going to freak people out and I'll probably get a bunch of haters, but that's fine. Um, if, if you're in a situation where you need sodium, you're super low on sodium. The first thing you do is eat the eyeballs out of the animal. It has the most sodium you can get right there, just in an eyeball. Sounds tasty. Yeah. One thing I do is make sure you don't get the little, it's like a bone. Just, you know. Yeah, I've eaten fish eyes. We, we make like a fish head stew when we're out uh, for our, one of our survival classes. And yeah. Yeah, we just take that whole fish head and put it in a cooking pot and boil it down and cook it. And yeah, you find that little eyeball bone or whatever you want. What the, yeah, whatever I forget, you call what, it. It. I forget yeah. what it's called. I should know it. I took a science class once, but I can't remember. But yeah, I mean, there's different ways to cure your meat or to preserve your meat, I should say. But um, yeah, typically out at camp, we make jerky you know, over us. Well, it's more smoked, I guess. We do both. Yeah, smoking and making jerky is probably the easiest. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody else got anything? Yeah, any more questions? All right. Well, I hope I helped everybody. Um, yeah. Super excited for doing this. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, Appreciate you're welcome. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to do some more stuff. I know Jason, he, he was talking about doing some, uh, I think you were talking about having your own online seminars with 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 this, your what you do. Are you, are you yeah. looking into that more? Yeah, okay. I'm looking into doing, you know, maybe just kicking up a YouTube channel. YouTube, YouTube channel. Damn, I can't speak. Um and doing some like just basic start off with real basic butchery uh, for, you know, like the one individual who might be a little bit intimidated, right. you know, we'll start out with some chicken and different ways of butcher yeah. chicken yeah. and I'll do some recipes and, you know, we'll, we'll move it. What we'll probably do uh, for classes with, with Jason and I in the future is we'll probably have a kind of a basic class where you guys can come out and watch him butcher an animal. It'll, uh, it'll all, there won't be very much hands-on on your part. You can just see how it's done. Um, and that'll be a more cost-effective class for people that can't afford buying a, an animal for us to do that big class. Um, but keep an eye out on that. We'll, as soon as we figure out a time and a date and a price for that class, we'll have it out there. Uh, and that's about it for this. Uh, I do have um, Survival Betty coming with us out here next week uh i think it's next thursday stay watch watch for that i've already put something out out there about that but we're going to talk about her homesteading her gardening her, her herbalism and everything that she does so it'll be the next part of what jason kind of started talking about here with gardening and having things food growing in your backyard other than than meat uh, yeah. which is a very important skill um tomorrow i have donnie dust on again we're going to go over uh, first aid, first responder stuff, medical supplies that you should have in your house, in your vehicle, and on your person at all times. So if you're interested in first aid, check us out tomorrow. Um, hopefully we'll have Jason back at some point here in the future, and maybe I can talk him into actually doing a, some sort of actual butchering on this channel. It'd be a little hard with the cameras and whatnot. Maybe, maybe if I get a turkey. Maybe. Yeah. I can't find them. So if anybody has a line on where to get a wild turkey, please shoot me a text. I can't. Right. I went out yesterday. Oh my God, I can't find anything. Yeah. My, my honey holes are no longer honey holes. That's what you get for telling too many people about them. But I know there's Whatever. there's places up at my my around my camp that we might be able to go. Okay. But yeah, and then um, we do a video on it. That'd be awesome. But yeah, I guess there's no more. Oh, um we're good then look doesn't look like any more, more questions but thanks okay. for joining me check out those knives if you guys are interested in butchering that helps support us uh check out jason's page it's just jasonnorick.com you can see it on the bottom of the page is there any other way for them to find you or contact you outside yeah. of facebook he's jason Newark and uh, uh, you can follow me on instagram jason the butcher on instagram okay um, right on. i generally instagram i generally post pictures uh you know, of stuff that I make, you know, elk ribs or tenderloin I did the other day. Um, every once in a while, you might see her on there. But uh, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. 
All right. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. We'll see you guys. Thanks. Take care. Bye. All right, buddy. Everybody, we're done for the day. Uh, you can catch this on Facebook or on YouTube uh, after this is done recording. Thanks for your support, and I'll see you again hopefully tomorrow. Have a good night.